Hi! In this tutorial, we're going to create two pages. The first page is going to be an HTML page that will ask the user for his name and email address. When the user clicks the submit button, the information will be sent to the server, and a servlet will print a new HTML page that will include the name and email address that the user sent to the server. Additionally to this, we are going to print the IP address of the client. First of all, we are going to create a new web application project in Eclipse. To do this, we are going to create a new project and we will select dynamic web project from the list. In this case, I will type example02 as the project name and we will click finish. To create the first page, we're going to create an HTML file inside the web content folder. I'm going to right click on web content, select new file. We're going to name it index.html. We will click the finish button. We will type HTML, close it. We will add additional tags for the HTML page. We will just add a header with a title and we will create a body. Inside the body, we will create an HTML form that will ask the information for the name and the email address. To do this, we will create a form tag with the attribute action equal to servlet1 and we will put the method of this form as get. We will check why did we did this later. Now we will ask the user for the name. We will create an input box. Type text. And we will give it a name. In our case it will be user name. And we are going to ask the user for his email address. Input, type text also. Um, the name of this field I want it to be email. Finally, we're going to create a submit button so that the user can send the information to the server. We're going to save the file. Once we have this, we will have created our first HTML page for our tutorial. We can check this page by running the application on the Tomcat 6 server. To do this, first of all, you need to add the application to the server. We will add the application for the tutorial number 2 and we will remove the application from our previous tutorial and we will click finish. I will run the application now and run the server. Once the server is started, we're going to check that everything is working OK. I go to localhost, column 8080. We're going to type example 02. As you can see, we have a simple form that will ask the user for his name and email address. And we'll have a submit button so that the user can send the information to the server. In this case, when I click the submit button, you will see that the server will report a 404 error telling us that the servlet1 resource is not available. This is because we haven't created yet our servlet nor configured the application. Our second step is to create the servlet that will print the information of the user in a new HTML page. We will print the username, the user email, and the IP address of the client. To do this, we are going to create an HTTP servlet. Remember that an HTTP servlet is a Java class that mainly extends from the HTTP servlet object. We are going to give a name to a class, in this case I am going to put servlet example. And I'm going to put the class in the package org.example02.test and we'll click the finish button. 
Just as in the first tutorial, we are going to override one of the methods of the HTTP service class. For this tutorial, we are going to use the doGet method. The reason for this is that in the index.html class, we use the method get to send the information. To get started with the server, we are going to read the information that the user sent to the server. First of all, we are going to read the name. We are going to tell it request dot get parameter and we will put the name of the parameter here remember that the name of the parameter is username after that we're going to read the email address for the email address the name is email and finally, we're going to get the IP address of the client. We're going to type request.get remote address. Now that we have all the information from the client, we are going to print the response HTML so that we will print the name of the user, email address, and the IP. Remember that the response, we can print it using the writer that is available from our response object. We will print to name is and we will open the name that the user sent in the request. With this code, we have created the servlet that will represent this second page of our tutorial. We will need to configure the server in order to publish our servlet. This is done in the web.xml file. For our case, we're going to create a new servlet. As usual, we're going to give it a name. In this case, it's going to be test2. And we will tell to the server that the servlet is located in org.example o2.test.servlet example. Finally, we're going to tell the server a mapping for servlet. We will tell the servlet that this mapping is for the servlet called test2 and we will give it a URL pattern. In our case it's gonna be servlet1. We will use servlet1 because that's how we define it in our index.html page. At this point, you should have three things. The first of them is the index.html page that represents the first page for the user. Second, you will have a servlet that will represent the second page for a client. In this servlet, we are just reading the information that the user sent and we're printing that information back in an HTML page. The third thing you will have is the configuration of your servlet in the web.xml file. With all these three things, now you can check that everything is working running the application again in the server. We're going to run the application in the book mode. We're going to go back to localhost, colon 8080, and example 02. We're going to type a name, in this case I will put my name, and I will put an email address, just to check that everything is working, and I'm going to submit the information. You will see that now we have an HTML page that contains a title that says this is a response, your name is, your email is, and the IP address. That concludes our second tutorial. I hope it has been useful.